Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube 106. I don't actually have anything to show you today because I've given it. Today I want to show you the mask that I made for my daughter's 21st and wore on Saturday on the weekend at her masquerade party. But I've given it as a gift to her, which was always my intention, so I don't have it here to show you. I do, however, have some photographs that I took of it and I also have, I think, I might include a few photographs from the party itself. We had a great time and most people had made masks or decorated masks at least. And it was really fun to see the creativity of people. There were some that were definitely craft, so they had glitter and stuff like that all over them. Others people had painted and they were beautiful. Um, others people had put uh, sequins and things like that on or diamantes and yeah there was a really lovely range of creativity on show and it was just a really well I enjoyed making mine and I really just hoped that other people enjoyed making theirs too it was a great theme for the party so it was really good I enjoyed it my daughter was making a dress for the party and she had been making it for some weeks beforehand and it was self-drafted by her. I think it was based on some other patterns but she was smashing two together and the dress was finished probably about two minutes before we left. Um, it wasn't entirely her fault. She has a part-time job and because of COVID many of her colleagues were sick and she'd had to work full-time the week before instead of just part-time. So yeah most of her sewing time had disappeared out the window and yeah well it led to a fairly stressful situation. <laughs> I'm glad that the, the dress looked beautiful and that she got it done in time because we really didn't know whether she would. So onto my mask itself, I finished it early last week and really until I'd actually done those eye holes I wasn't sure that it was going to work. Fortunately it all came together really nicely and I was really happy with it in the end. So I'll include some photographs but because I don't actually have the mask to show you it makes it a little bit difficult to explain what I did but I've got this piece of paper which was my template that I made you can see there's a hole there that was a dart so that it actually fitted onto the mask you'll remember that I mounted my fabric on the bias so that it could um, work on the shape mask that I was fitting it to. So in the end what I did after I'd finished um, embroidering it, which I showed you the finished piece last time, I cut it out about a centimetre larger around the whole thing and I didn't cut in the eye holes. I left that till later. Uh, there was tacking around the edge so that made it really nice and easy for me to know where the edge of this shape was going to be. And so I cut it out about a centimetre larger, which is, for those people who work in inches, a little bit less than half an inch. Half an inch is about 12 millimetres, and this was 10. 
And because it was cut on the bias, it meant that there really wasn't, I didn't need to take many snips out of the seam allowance to get it to fit over. I did need to take one there and I possibly needed to take a little snip there just so that it was able to ease around those shapes a bit better. And then what I did, I hadn't snipped yet, I did that later. I cut out black felt in the same shape as this and I, I joined it together down the center and it didn't matter how neat or unneat that was because it was all going to be covered over anyway. But I also, because I'd taken a dart in the actual fabric here, I enclosed that through that gap there. So when I was joining the black felt together, I'd sew it so that on the back here, the seam allowance was poking out. So you didn't see that from the front. So I thought that worked quite nicely. And then around all of the shapes, so you'll remember there were lots of cur curved teardrop types of shapes. I, with a white sewing thread, I tacked um, around each of those shapes so that very little of the tacking was on the front, but it was hidden by the stitching. And that attached it to the, um, the felt behind. And that meant that the whole thing was in one piece like this. And it was quite, not rigid, but it had shape. And then what I did was I laid that over the top of the mask shape that I was using. And then I had another piece of lightweight fabric on the back that was cut to the same shape as this. And it had its dart as well. No, I didn't put its dart into later. I just left it across the back. And then I started off, I think, probably about here. And I started going down the side, across to here, then the same from here. Just using a simple ladder stitch. So I'd take a stitch in one side, take a stitch in the other. So the front bit to the back bit to the front bit to the back bit over the edge of the mask shape and then pulled that together so it pulled it in tight but the seam the sorry the stitches were invisible so I did that there and then I went across the top I had to take a snip there and across the top probably to the center as well there and at that point I could see that the outside was working really nicely but I still didn't know about the inside bits so what I had to do was I took a little snip across the center I didn't I think eventually went right to the ends but I didn't do that from the initial part because I didn't want it to fray in a way that was going to be bad and then I folded that seam allowance to the back and then I did the same with the lining and I did the same sort of stitching around here except for at the inner ends and the outer ends of the eye shape um, if I'd continued with the ladder stitch there, it wouldn't have been enough to hold it because when you cut to here, you were ending up with tiny bits of seam allowance and they were going to fray very easily. So I actually did like an overstitch over them um, as neatly as I could. So it was really quite insignificant, but it held it much better and meant that I didn't have little whiskers sticking out in these bits. So the whole thing worked. I also, there were um, uh, holes for uh, elastic. I took the elastic off and I used um, ribbon instead. I just tied it through that hole and then I had it coming out sandwiched between the two layers, the lining and the front layer. And then once the whole thing was done, I got three strands of, what was it, cotton embroider and I um, couched that right around the edge. So some of the strands lay in front of the ribbon, some went behind, so it made it quite a seamless join. Um, and the whole thing was edged in a couching stitch. So it worked. And I was so pleased that it works, but worked. But it was until I did those eyes that I really didn't have much confidence that it was actually going to be a successful product. I really hoped that it would, and it was, but I just didn't know till I'd done it. So I wore it on Saturday night. I enjoyed wearing it. Um, it was probably the mask that had the most work into it, but you know, I'm the mother of the 21st year old, so you know, I'm allowed to. Um, and I gave it as a gift to my daughter and I think she will appreciate that in years to come. It was a gift. It was something of me, my special abilities given to her for her special event. Not for her to wear, but for me to wear, but for her to treasure afterwards. And she bought her mask when we were in Venice about eight years ago. I always 
hoping that she would have the chance to have a party with that mask in the future and that was why she chose that theme for her 21st. So it was a lovely event. My mask was great. I really was happy with it. And I have put it up on Facebook and um, Instagram over the last few days and people have been very complimentary about it. So I'm glad you like it too. Um, I enjoyed making it and I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of the process of how it was made. So thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.